go through the basics of search engine optimization. We're going to cover two things today, the basics of on-page optimization and off-page optimization. Both are very important when it comes to optimizing your website. On-page optimization are things you can do to the actual pages within your website. Off-page optimization has to do with creating some strong inbound links that come into your website. So let's cover on-page optimization first. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is something called your title tag. Now this is your title tag right up here at the top in the blue. So you see our title tag's best-selling internet marketing course to explode your profits insider secrets. That is actually one of the most important aspects of optimizing your page. That's the very first thing the search engine spider is going to look at when it gets to the page. It's going to see what keywords are in your title tag and then it's going to look through the rest of your page to see if those keywords match up. So one thing I will advise you is stay away from putting things like welcome to my web page, the name of your company, unless a lot of people are searching for your company. You want to stick with your primary keywords. Those are the two keyword phrases you're optimizing for on your web page. Okay, so here you can even combine keywords. You'll find we rank in the top three for internet marketing course. We also rank for best-selling internet marketing course. So you can be a little bit crafty there how you combine the keywords so you can get more keyword combinations you can rank for. One very interesting thing I want to show you, let's just go to google.com, okay, and we're going to type in the words internet marketing course. And here we are, we're in the top three for internet marketing course. Again, a very competitive keyword. But what's one thing some of you may notice? Look at what our hyperlink is. It's a best-selling internet marketing course to explode your profits. That's exactly what our title tag was. So you want to be very aware of what's in your title tag is going to show up as your hyperlink in Google. Now you want to keep your title tag to under 60 characters, but as you notice in Google, our tag cut off at profits. Okay, so if there, you always want to put your main keywords first. We have best-selling internet marketing course because every search engine has a different length of what it will accept in a title tag. So as long as your most important information, your most important keywords are first, you don't have to worry when it gets cut off. So as you can see, your title tag is your hyperlink in the search engines, and your meta description tag is your actual description in the search engines. And I'm going to go ahead now and show you where you can find these tags. So you'd want to go into view, and you'd want to go into source. Okay, and that will show you the code of your website. So if we take a look at the code, it's actually hidden over here, title tag. So I know a lot of people out there may not have access to their code. So some of the things we're going to go through on on-page optimization, you're going to have to go into the HTML. So if you're using a program like Dreamweaver or NVR, you can hand code, you're set. But if not, don't worry. All you need to do is contact whoever takes care of your coding. Tell them that you want to put in a title tag or any of the other tags we go through today, and they'll be happy to make those changes for you. I think that will do it for the title tag. Why don't we move on to the meta tags? Now, the meta tags used to propel you to the top of the search engines. You know, there's still that industry word where people always think the meta tags are very, very important. Now, as you notice here, we have two meta tags. One's called a meta description tag, and one's called a meta keyword tag. Now, your meta description tag is the more important tag, okay? Because the meta description tag could actually be used as your description in the search engines. So that hyperlink is your title tag, and sometimes the meta description will be the description that goes underneath that. Yahoo always, almost always uses your meta description tag. Google uses it sometimes, but Google's a little bit finicky that way. Sometimes it will use something else. Now, when you're looking to write your meta description tag, the number one thing, start off with your primary keyword phrase. Google will look at that. Okay, so we've started off here with Internet Marketing Course. 
Okay, so that just reconfirms what we're trying to optimize for. Then what you want to do, what's your main goal of getting in the search engine? You want to make sales. You want to get people to your website. So you're going to write a couple sentences that are going to give the biggest benefits of your website and entice someone to click on it. So we have finally, the world's top internet marketer reveals exact strategies that will boost your online sales and explode your profits. I know I'd want to click on that. Okay, so that's your goal there. Just write two enticing sentences. Now when it comes down to the length, I would say to keep it under 200 characters. Again, always work with your most important information first. Anything that cuts off, that's fine. And if you can work in your keyword phrase again, why not? Okay, so with the meta keyword tag, I want everyone out there to know it's the most useless tag that you have on your website. And it's a little bit of, it's a little bit ironic because if you mi misuse your meta keyword tag, the search engines will penalize you. Okay, but they're not going to give you better rankings because of the keywords you have in that tag. So what I recommend to people is do not repeat your keywords. That's just going to get you penalized. Do not use keywords that have copyright protection. Just another quick note on the keyword tag. Put in a handful of keywords that are most related to what you're trying to optimize for. You want to try and keep it under 150 characters. Some people use more, but I say what's the point if the search engines really aren't going to look at it. Don't take any risk there. Put in your main keywords, commas or spaces, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Well, another thing I want to look at here is the, dom the how we name the page. Now, you guys already know you should have a keyword-rich domain name. You want to have a domain name of what your customers are searching for, number one. I know a lot of you out there already have websites, okay? So if your domain name isn't keyword-rich, keyword that's fine. Just really be careful how you name your pages. With domain names, you want to stay away from hyphens. Search engines can pick the keywords out without hyphens. It now sees hyphens as, oh my gosh, you're an SEO expert, so I'm going to give your site a lower ranking in a lot of cases. Now, let's take a look at how we've done our actual page name. We have tips letter underscore internet hyphen marketing hyphen course dot HTML. Okay, so here's where it's another the other thing you need to look at where you don't want to have hyphens in your domain name, but you do want to have hyphens in the name of your page. When you're naming your page, you want to use the keyword you're optimizing for. Okay, and the search engines do like when you separate those with hyphens. Now we want to look at something called an H1 tag. Okay, I know that sounds scary because it's technical. Okay, but what that all that stands for a heading tag. Now, when you're actually doing your HTML, you have an H1 tag all the way up to an H6 tag. An H6 tag is the smallest. All it has to do with is the size of the font. But when Google or any spider comes to your page, it sees an H1 tag is very, very important. Now, you can only use an H tag, H1 tag once on your page. So we recommend doing that in your headline. So if you were to look at our code, you would see right here, this is in an H1 tag. So when the search engine get here, gets here, it knows that's a very important headline. And as you notice, we have our keyword phrase right here, best selling internet marketing course. So the headline of your website should be in an H1 tag and it should have your primary keyword phrase in the headline. Okay, the H2, so next size down, what we've done here is use an H2 tag for these three headlines here, because they're not quite as important, but we still want them to stand out to the search engines. As you're writing your sales copy or any copy on your page, you want to put every subhead above a paragraph anywhere else in an H3 tag. So remember, you can use an H1 tag once, you can use an H2 tag a few times, and you can use an H3 tag as many times as you like. The next thing we want to go through a little bit is keyword density. And this is where a lot of people get stuck. Everyone wants to know a magic number. What should I use for keyword density? How many times? I really need to get that keyword in there. I want you guys all to think, what's the number one goal 
of your web page is to get people to buy. Do not ruin your copy trying to get that perfect keyword density. Now, keyword density is how many times you should get a keyword into the copy on your web page for the search engines to see it as important. But the industry standard for keyword density is actually 7%. Okay, so you can have up to 7% without the search engines accusing you of spamming and actually giving you a lower ranking. But what we really teach here at the Internet Marketing Center is to naturally slip your keywords in. Forget about the numbers. Go through your copy and see where the keywords fit in the best. As you notice here, we have the keyword here at the beginning. Okay, this internet marketing course is for you. You notice how that just slides right into the sentence? It doesn't look like we forced it in. Well, I think that's all you need to know about keyword density. We don't need to overcomplicate that. It's just really simple. Naturally get those keywords in. Remember, it's what your audience is searching for, and you're just reconfirming that. Now, the next thing I want to go over are alt tags. Now, in any sales copy that you have, you're going to have images. Okay, you can actually take advantage of your images. There's something called Google Images, and Google will actually index your images. And on some searches now, when you do a search, what comes up at the top of, top of the page are a list of images. Let's use an example. Now, you notice when we research Internet Marketing Strategy, we have these three images that come up at the top. So what we want to do with that is we want to figure out how can we get our images there. That's by naming every single image on your web page something that's keyword rich. But be very careful, don't name all your images the same keyword. And even see our, our header tag right here. You can name that a keyword phrase. It doesn't matter what the image is. Do your best to make it a, a sentence that people can understand, because if I have images turned off, I'll be able to see that alt tag. The next thing I want to talk about is formatting. So when you have your primary keyword phrases, the search engines are going to see them as more important if you use some formatting in your sales copy. So if you notice here, we have Internet Marketing Course underlined. We also have it in that H1 tag. Okay, so what you want to do, so as you're going through your copy, you want to make sure you use your keyword phrases. They have bolding italics, any type of formatting on them, because the search engines do see that as most important. But again, think about your customer. You want to try and get your keywords formatted, but why not format them with a benefit? So when your customer is scrolling through, not only do they see that excellent keyword phrase reconfirming this is what they're looking for, they also see a benefit of what's in it for them. So the next thing we want to go through is a little bit on your navigation. Now, when we go into navigation, I'm going to show you an excellent example of some really good keyword-rich navigation. Now, here are some of the keywords for eBay. Okay, so we have eBay selling. Learn how to make money selling on eBay. You want to echo those keywords in your navigation. So here we have starting an eBay business, products to sell on eBay, how to start an eBay store. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we have eBay secret, eBay selling, how to make money on eBay. Okay, so when you're doing your navigation, try and use very descriptive keyword phrases. Now, you want to use the keyword phrases of each page you're optimizing for. Okay, so as an example, eBay course. So that, that link should go to a page that's optimizing for the words eBay course. Let's see if it does. Excellent. The auction tips eBay course is all you need to become an eBay millionaire power seller. And let's take a look at our title tag, eBay course. That all should match up. There's one last thing we want to go through, and that's called anchor text. So you're going to see an example. Okay, so see the code here? That's the actual anchor text code. And all that does is make it a hyperlink. Okay, so this is anchor text. It says best selling internet marketing course. Okay, so if we want to lead you to another page on our website, we want to use the anchor text to get you to that page.
I still notice in a lot of web pages it says www.mysite.com forward slash whatever page it is. So you're much better using what we call as anchor text. It will look at it. It's not going to try and rank us on it. It's just going to look for those keyword phrases it sees in our title tag. If you follow those basic principles, you're going to have your page all set up for those search engine spiders. So that pretty much are the basics of on-page optimization. Now let's go through and talk a little more about off-page optimization. So with off-page optimization, you want to focus on getting sites to link to your website. Okay, so what you want to do very first is install the Google Toolbar. So you can just go to toolbar.google.com and you want to install the Google Toolbar. And the Google Toolbar is a ranking system from Google. It goes from 0 to 10, and the higher your page rank, the more Google sees your website as an authority figure and relevant to the topic or niche that you have chosen. The higher your page rank, the sometimes easier it can be to get good search engine rankings. OK, so you notice here on the toolbar we have the page rank. So we have a page rank of 5 out of 10, which is fantastic and definitely takes some time to work up to. So when you're looking to get inbound links to your website, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. First, there's something called anchor text. So when you're looking for ways to get inbound links, and there's some great ways to do that. You can do it through articles. You can do it through blogs. You can do it forums, you can do it through social media, and today I just really want to go through the basics of what it is, but there's lots of ways to get inbound links. But your number one goal here is to create a content-rich, valuable website that people would naturally want to link to. But with Web 2.0, there are a lot more strategies you can use to help you get more inbound links. When you're looking for people to link to you, you want to make sure they have a decent page rank. So you also want to make sure their sites are not banned in Google or Yahoo, because that can directly affect you. So you can check the Alexa toolbar to see what their traffic looks like. You can also go to Yahoo and Google to make sure they are within their listings. OK, so when you're looking to get inbound links to your website, you want to use anchor text. And anchor text is simply a fancy way of how to create a hyperlink. Now, your best goal is to get websites to naturally link to you without you even seeking that out. But you're also gonna do gonna have to do some of the legwork yourself. Now, when you're getting inbound links to your website, no matter what method you're using, you don't always want to use the same anchor text. You need to change that up. So if Google sees that 100 websites are linking to you, but they all use the exact same anchor text, it's going to say, wow, that's not very natural, and you're not going to get the credit for those links. So use different variations for your keyword phrase. Also, link to different pages within your website. So you should, and remember, when you're linking, getting inbound links, so links from other websites to link to different pages of your website, always use the keyword phrase you're optimizing that page for. But to build up a really strong website, there has to be inbound links to lots of different pages, not just your index page. But if you're just starting out, your index page is a great way to start. One other tip, as the course has lots of other points on some of the other things I mentioned, like articles or press releases, blogging, forums, um, lots of social media and web 2.0 strategies for inbound links, is a researcher competition. See who's linking to them. How did they get that top spot? But be sure you stay away from sites that look too good to be true. Link farms, free from all links. Focus on pages that at least have a page rank of over three. Unless it's really, really targeted to your area, then you don't have to worry about it that much. 
and sites that have some kind of trust authority. So when you're trying to analyze your competition, here's a really good way to look at their into a page. So if you do, never do a link check in Google because it will only give you a sampling of the inbound links to a page. So if you do this, first go to Yahoo, and if I put in this command, it's going to bring up whatever competitor site I put in, and it's going to show me who's linking to them. That's a great place to start for your inbound links. So you definitely may want to note this down, okay, and analyze your competition and see who's linking to them, and then you can get started on working on your inbound link strategy. Okay, so remember, the on-page and the off-page optimization are extremely important in helping you getting those great search engine rankings.